had to suck it in for a while there. Honey, I'm 26, okay? I'm 26, I'm not ready for wrinkles. Hi, my name is Rudy, welcome to my channel, and thank you so much for being here. In today's video, we are going to be covering my all-time favorite products for oily and acne-prone skin, and specifically, we're going to be talking about the type of makeup that I like to wear when I'm going through an active breakout period. If you feel concerned about your oily and acne-prone skin, and you want to learn more about makeup and skincare, and just how to deal with it in general, please subscribe to my channel, it would help me out so much. When I think that something may be irritating my skin, it's really important to factor in the ingredients that are used to make that product. After years of dealing with acne, I started to research the ingredients in my skincare and in my makeup to determine what things were really bothering me and irritating me the most. I found a website called Inky Decoder, you've probably heard of it before, where you put in your product name and it gives you a breakdown of all of the ingredients in that product, but also really easily tells you what that means in layman's terms, you know, how it affects your skin, if it's a good ingredient, if it's a bad ingredient. I have loved using this website just to quickly see, you know, does this makeup have coconut oil in it? Does this makeup have an irritant in it that I really want to stay away from? And also just to see what's in the makeup that does well for me so you can track that and continue to purchase products that do well for your skin type. So before we hop into foundation, I want to discuss a really important step, which I know you already know, but that step is using SPF every single day. The sun is something that can make your breakouts much worse, and not only that, but causes scarring on acne that's healing, and the best way to prevent that is to use SPF. So the SPF that I'm going to recommend in today's video is the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. I know you've seen me use this in past videos. I can link one above. I honestly find this to be one of the best, if not the best, primer for your makeup, especially if you have oily skin. Okay, so let's get into the foundation. My first and classic favorite, high coverage, I know it's gonna cover what I need and it's gonna make me feel comfortable, is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. I am probably positive that you already have this in your collection because it has been a staple for so many oily skin people for so long. I am in shade Classic Ivory 120. Honestly, this is a little light for me and I usually have to add in some darkening drops, but they have a really great shade range for literally any skin type and any skin tone. I find that this is mattifying, but not so like cakey and it's really beautiful thinned out. That's what I like to do. I don't really prefer high coverage foundations unless I'm able to really thin them out on the skin and make them look natural. And I can always do that with this. I actually wore this on my wedding day, so I will put in a picture here. You can see what it looks like in flash photography. It has no SPF, so there's no flashback, and I've never had any problems with this. So my next recommendation for a foundation is the L'Oreal Infallible 24-Hour Fresh Wear. I know that this is raved about in the community, and it's for good reason, because honestly, it works well on dry skin and oily skin. I'm in the color 425. It does have sunscreen in it. I do also want to make sure that you guys know the sunscreen in your makeup is not enough. You really need to continue to use sunscreen before you wear your makeup. It does have kind of a strong smell, so if you don't like that, just be aware there is a strong fragrance in it. I don't wear this as much as I wear the Fit Me because, I don't know, something about it, it dries down really, really quickly, so you kind of have to get it on fast but I do like it a lot and I've never noticed any issues with it. For a more natural finish and light coverage, I have a few options, but my absolute favorite is the Bare Minerals Stick Foundation. I'm in shade Cashew 3.5 and I just find that this foundation was my absolute savior when I was going through my tretinoin experience at the beginning. If you're curious about that, that is an acne medication that I've been on for almost the past year. I do have a video explaining it. I can link it up above. This foundation was an absolute godsend for me during that time. It has amazing coverage, but it's, it's really a lightweight finish. And I find that the longer you wear it, the more it looks natural. A lot of people mention that this slides around on their face and I'm wondering if they're not setting it. I do have to set my makeup at least a little bit in my T-zone and when I do that with the stick foundation, I don't find to have any issues. Last but not least, when it comes to coverage and BB creams, I enjoy the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB. I think this is amazing for oily skin and honestly, it's one of the only BB creams that is specifically made for people like us. And we have to stick together. I mean, how often do you see something that says for oily skin on the packaging? Not very much, okay? These dry girls, they have the pick of the litter. We don't have much, so we need to keep this, okay? I will be pissed if CoverGirl takes this out of stock. 
This has a light to medium coverage. It looks beautiful on the skin, oil-free, good for sensitive skin. I mean, it works amazing. There's no SPF in this, so make sure you put some on before, but highly, highly recommend it. So I'm not going to cover under eye concealer today because I think that everyone has their own journey with their under eye and the way that they like it to look. If you're interested, I'm happy to do a video on my favorite concealers, but we're gonna skip that for the sake of this video. I do, however, want to mention a concealer that is really, really, really great for confidence building when it comes to acne, and that is the NARS Soft Matte Cream Pot Concealer. I am in shade Custard, classic. This pot concealer is a lot thicker and more dense than a concealer out of a tube, and it is used for me personally to cover blemishes. So what I like to do is either stick my beauty blender or a small brush in there and cover my blemishes, any scarring, any marks that I may have, and it does such a beautiful job without having to cake up additional foundation. So I mentioned being oily that I like to set my face and I have a couple powders that I wanna talk about. First, to set my under eyes, I still am loving the old school Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder. This is a classic for a reason. It makes your face look so beautiful and poreless. Now, when I was dealing with acne, I thought maybe I shouldn't be using that. I don't really know if I feel comfortable using a loose powder on my face. And that is when I stepped into the world of Bare Minerals pressed and original powder foundations. The Bare Minerals original, okay? My mom uses it. Your mom uses it. His mom uses it. Everybody's mom uses it. It's it's not as easy to put on as you might think. I personally am not a fan. I think that the coverage is good, but it took me like 25 minutes to put this on, and even then I felt that it looked kind of streaky. If you have oily skin, the original version is kind of shiny and turns into almost like a liquid. I just, I don't recommend that. And what I do recommend is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro, and it's the um, Performance Wear Powder Foundation. I have color Golden Ivory 08, and this was my absolute favorite thing, along with the Bare Minerals Stick, during um, active breakouts with retinoin. So what I would do with this is when I would put on my foundation stick, I would take a more rounded top brush and I would sort of dab into the areas that I felt, you know, my T-zone needed to be set around my nose. But then I would take my beauty blender and I would take the butt. And all you have to do is really dab into it a few times and you'll see it's gonna pick it up there. And my forehead was my biggest problem area during all of that, so I would just lightly dab it on and what it's gonna do and i did that today as well what it's gonna do is give you some coverage on the area where you're dealing with irritation without layering tons and tons of products so so we're gonna talk about two bronzers one that is matte and one that has a little bit of shine to it that is my personal favorite that i've been using for like five years straight and it's the same one so first we'll talk about the um matte one which is the the hula benefit bronzer um, everyone knows this. It is a cult classic. Hoola is a matte bronzer that is perfect for contouring. It's just a straight up bronzer and I find that this does really well if you have a lot of pores on your face but you still wanna give yourself a little bit of a chiseled look without drawing attention to your pores. I find that Hoola is really great for that or if you wanna do a little light contouring on your nose. But my all time favorite is the Too Faced Sweetheart Bronzer and you can see that this is very well loved. I've already hit pan on this and I use this every every single day. This bronzer has two colors in it and I just think mixing them together is perfect on my skin tone. So if you're similar to me, you'll absolutely love this. All over the face, if you want a sun-kissed glow, it's, it's really gonna give you that. And I have used this through many, many, many times of acne and I've had no issues. So for blush, I have two different recommendations and they are both amazing. We're first gonna talk about the Benefit Dallas or any of the box blushes from Benefit. Honestly, Dallas is just my favorite. I've hit pan on it. These box blushes are beautiful. I've never had any issues with them when it comes to irritation on my skin. Dallas is almost like a bronzer and a blush mixed together, and it's something I used a lot during breakouts when I was younger because you could put it on the forehead and the cheeks, and it kind of covers blush and bronzer in one. My number one pick for blushes when it comes to oily and acne prone skin are the Tarte blushes. They are the Amazonian clay ones, and they last all day long. They are amazing. I have a couple colors and I also have a Tarte booklet, which it's embarrassing looking. Okay, let's talk about this. Tarte. I'm a 26 year old woman. I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to 30, honey. And I don't wanna carry this around, okay? I got this from my sister and honey, 
It's amazing. I don't think they make this anymore, but they put something out like this like every summer and every winter. This has a ton of blushes. It has a bronzer and a highlighter in it. I don't use those as much, but these blushes are absolutely beautiful. They're all matte. I recommend using matte blushes and then going in with a highlighter in specific areas. I find that it helps sort of camouflage some of the pores on your face, especially if you're getting oily. You don't really wanna be oily and then also have shimmer on your cheeks. It's never been a look I've wanted, so you can get them in a single. This is in color Exposed. It's another one of those blushes that's sort of blushy and bronzery, so highly recommend these. They're just, they're so amazing and they have a cult following for a good reason. So being someone who should shy away from highlight, I definitely don't, okay? But I have a very specific way of putting on my highlighter and I have a very specific type of highlighter that I like to use, okay? I have a ton here that I'm looking at that I like to use for different reasons, but we're gonna talk about two today that I specifically think will work for people who are going through active breakouts. My number one choice of all time forever is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. They basically pay you to wear this highlighter, okay? It's like $2. It's just absolutely stunning on all skin tones. I think that it's beautiful on mature skin. It's just more of a, a sheen than it is highlight or any, I mean, there's no glitter in it. It just looks like the sun is beaming off of your face. I do have it on today. I have all of these products on today, actually. If you don't already have this, you really, really, really need to go pick this up. If you're afraid to wear highlighter and you wanna take that first step and just dip your toe in the water, this is it, sweetie. This is your calling. It's here. The other option would be for someone who wants a little bit more glow, but maybe something more cool toned. Once again, we're gonna be talking about a Benefit box product. The Benefit Dandelion got like no love in the beauty community. I remember when Nikki Tutorials mentioned that she thought this was like a setting powder. And I was like, girl, where? I mean, shit, if I wore this out as a setting powder, it's got some color. I mean, I was shocked when people said that they didn't think it was bright enough. I mean, that is bright. So this is what I like to use on the very, very tops of my cheekbone. Um, and it really does, I mean, look at that. It brings some highlight in. So the thing that I like about it beyond that is that it's really finely milled. And so it's not going to cling to any of those really gross spots where you might have some dry skin. It's just gonna sweep right over that. You can also use a smaller brush and sort of pinpoint where you wanna put that on the tip of your nose or maybe your Cupid's bow. I'm also just gonna give a bonus shout out to my favorite highlighter of all time, which is the Anastasia Amrezi highlighter. I also wore this on my wedding day, y'all. This highlighter is the most perfect highlighter that's ever been invented. And if you really wanna add a little something to the Essence Pure Nude but not look too overdone, you put this on with a beauty blender and then you take a fan brush and you put this on top. Y'all, it's so beautiful. It's skin-like, there's no shimmer, there's no glitter. It's just straight glow. I mean, look how beautiful that is. And then lastly, in terms of setting sprays, do I really recommend setting sprays when you're going through a breakout? No. I really don't. I think the best thing that you can do if you feel like your skin is looking a little powdery is take your beauty blender when it's damp and just dab over your skin and sort of roll it in those areas where you feel like it's a little powdery. It's gonna pick up on some of that and also distribute some of that water back into your skin to give it a more lifelike finish. If you absolutely have to use setting spray, I have used and do love the Urban Decay All Nighter, obviously. This is everybody's favorite. I wore this on my wedding day. It keeps your makeup from melting. It keeps your makeup in place. And it does help oily skin a lot. If you have acne, I would not use it, but it is really helpful for oily skin. And I just, I wanted to mention that. I have tons of other recommendations for oily and acne prone skin, but I felt that these were the ones that made me feel most comfortable when I was feeling the least comfortable about myself. I have tons more videos on the way, lots of stuff to talk about great cream products for oily and acne prone skin. We're gonna do a makeup tutorial on how to do a no makeup makeup look for oily and acne prone skin. Let me know down below if you've used any of these products and if you've had success with them. I can't wait to hear from you guys and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye. <laughs>